Hello. Um, I'm going to try and make this fairly short, um, but also uh, detail enough in what I want to say. Um, today I'm not going to really be looking at any particular um, <clears throat> movie, but uh, a couple of uh, film companies, uh, distribution, uh, home video distribution companies. Um, some of you may know the names of these companies. Some of you may have never heard of them. Or maybe you've bought uh, a Blu-ray or a DVD or a box set from one of these companies yet never really heard of them or thought much of them at the very least. Um, so, I mentioned... I've mentioned them before and last time, the last... Uh, episode of this I actually did uh, <clears throat> talk about um, one in particular um, and that is Scream Factory and now this is an example of Scream Factory uh, or Shout Factory not Shout Factory that is the main one I'm thinking of horror because of the last time but you know, you know what I mean Shout Factory now uh why bring this up? Yeah, there's the logo. There. And uh, here is Scream Factory. I also had this last time, uh, or I had this out last time, uh, available for an example of what Shout Factory is. And as you can see, and with Shout Factory, what they do is they offer what's cool is alternate covers. So if you look through here, you get the, this cover, um, an alternate cover. This is the original theatrical uh, poster, I believe. Yeah, the poster, and this is the packet, the special collector's edition. Now, for me, if I have the slip covers, I'll often, you know, uh, do the reverse so that when I go to watch it, I see the alternate cover. But otherwise, I just leave it as the specific, uh, like this kind of cover, their their own cover that they made. Um, there's some other releases they that they have. Um, there's Baba Duke. Fog, Escape from New York, Mad Max, uh, Nightbreed, Director's Cut, They'll Live. Though I don't know if I would have classify Mad Max or Escape from New York as horror, because as I said last time, uh, Scream Factory is Shout Factory's horror brand, or their li or line of horror films that they just title under screen factor because you know horror terror that would fall in the line of like screams and then uh, on the back there's also uh, the army of darkness the sentinel pumpkin head phantom of the paradise the people under the star or stairs i'm sorry and then it also lists other films released by them Sleep Away Camp, Prince of Darkness, Motel Hell, The Howling, Day of the Dead, The Fun House, Shocker, The Car, Night of the Comet, Cat People, and more. And here's the back of that. Interesting, I'm not actually doing some sort of review of this or whatever, but on the off chance, people have never heard of this company. And what they have to offer if you're a horror fan or just fan of various things in general. Uh, I have said last time, WKRP in Cincinnati, that uh, a very popular TV show in the 80s uh, could never really get a proper release until Shout Factor came along. I'm sorry, I to do this this way because it's being stupid. Because of music rights. Well, what Shout Factory did was 
they were able to make deals and able to pr pretty much for in situations like that preserve the series as complete as you could ever get it. For that show, they I think they believe I got they got seventy seventy five percent of all of the music for the entire series intact. And what they couldn't license, they were able to find music that was not a part of it. Now, Shout Factory, Scream Factory, but Shout Factory is the main one, uh, the main you know the main banner they go by. They care a lot about films and television and they also release music and they care about their stuff they care about the material they're releasing they put a bunch of special features in it and there's a bunch of dvd and or blu-ray releases they usually try and usually get all that stuff all those features if you're into special features onto the blu-rays onto the dvds of their sets their releases that way you essentially have everything. Uh, that way you don't have to have, like if you remember one version, oh, there's a special documentary that was never involved, or it was never included in any future release except for this one like DVD set or this one Blu-ray set. And maybe they refine the picture quality or, and or sound quality later on, but so the features were either lacking or they had new, but they didn't include all. Well, Shot Factory usually gets all that. Usually, unless there's some specific rights issues with a certain company that might own that original uh, certain home video release, and as a result, that documentary or that featurette or whatever, they just can't get it for some reason. Uh, they usually are pretty complete. Um, usually. Now, I'm also going to talk about another uh, company, uh, Criterion Collection. Now, I've talked about some films and shown some Blu-rays and stuff uh, that are under that uh, company as well. I have Silence of the Lambs and I have another example, Silence of the Lambs, because well, that's a horror movie. And, you know, Serpent of the Rainbow is a horror horror film. Now, one might not think this is a horror movie, but, you know, it's a Silence of the Lambs. It's a, I, I, it's a, it's a psychological horror movie. Really, the, the, if you look at the premise, uh, FBI trainee uh, uh, goes and meets with a cannibalistic doctor who, to help catch a serial killer of women who skins the certain parts of the women's bodies, like the back and whatever. That way, he basically has, or not just the back, but just various parts of the bodies. That way, he has a, he can make a woman suit. That's horrifying and creepy all on its own. Uh, but interestingly enough, uh, Hannibal Lecter is the scariest part, the cannibal behind glass behind bars most of the time and it's not just that he's a cannibal it's just you hear so much about him and then he, he's so much the opposite and yet he looks into your eyes into your soul so creepy now Criterion um, they also have they take a lot of care into the films they uh, put out. Now this is an example of uh, having it two examples here because uh, yeah, see, there's that cover again, but more explained or spread out. And they you pretty much usually always come with a booklet or, of some sort, or uh, they usually have like essays and stuff and. When it comes like this, they list the cast, the credits, right there. And they'll just have like some sort of essay from a critic, somebody who, you know, like I said, but they also have other things for this set. This isn't always the case for a 
all of their stuff, but so there's a like Night of the Living Dead. They have like a poster of sorts. Though it's just the girl's picture. Though it could, you could think because of how big it is, you unfold it, and it's like that's the essay, and it has all this stuff of like the cast and crew, and then special like production credits and thanks and about the transfer and things like that. They put a lot of care in their films also. Um, they also include pretty much every special feature ever released on, on video from DVDs to Blu-ray releases before up until Criterion got a hold of it and released it themselves. So, uh, yeah, 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 the discs are just blood. Basically. And, uh, yeah, this is a good release. I watched it. I, I recently got this movie and I watched it and watched the various special features. They're quite they're quite extraordinary. All old and new stuff. Like all the old documentaries from past DVD, Blu-ray releases, plus some new stuff. So They always do something. They always do something special. They always put in so much hard work. That's why I love them. And the people there. And, um, and this is the following by Christopher Nolan. His first movie ever. Which also includes one of his early short fur, um, uh, films, Doodlebug. They also have chapter selections, also sometimes, not always. Well, sometimes they have them in like these booklets, but other times, like the following. Because of how they're like plastic releases. Just open the case and look. Good film and a good release of it. And plus, uh, there's another variation. It's not always a book, as I said. So here you go. Special thanks, acknowledgments, cast. This is the front of it. And, um, without the transfer. And this is the essay that the critic wrote. No one begins, haha, uh -huh. play on Batman begins. Because that's what he's essentially best known for now is the Dark Knight trilogy. But yeah, that's just, just some stuff they do. They put. Criterion usually like to, likes to put out films that are deemed important. Going way back to Laserdisc, um, they released uh, Citizen Kane and. King Kong, um, though they never re were able to reacquire those rights uh, to those films, um, but sometimes over the years you actually can get, like for instance, commentaries, like commentaries on la those laser discs. They sometimes get ported over to DVDs and Blu-rays. For instance. Um, Taxi Driver was included on the Criterion Collection years ago, but yeah, it was only on Laserdisc and never came back. But there's a 1986 commentary with Martin Scorsese and Paul Schrader recorded for the Criterion Collection. So, uh, yeah. I think with the Criterion Collection, it's mostly for people who are cinephiles, film buffs, whatever. For Shout Factory, I think I think people would are probably more would be more familiar with Shout Factory with their releases, because <clears throat> um, uh, while they do release films that are fairly are um, are important, 
not just fairly important, but are important. Um, some series, like the Mad Max, uh, they, yes, I believe they released their original Mad Max trilogy. Now they're, I'm not sure how truly beloved that franchise is. Um, I know it has a, its fan base, but, you know, they just, but, you know, it's... You know, some people might not think it's well, that franchise is all that important, honestly. Um, the Shout Factory thinks it is. And uh, it's a good series, too, so why not release it? Uh, the best quality and sound uh, picture and sound quality you could ever get. Um, they, and again, they release TV shows, too. And music, but basically the whole point of this is those companies, I feel they deserve more recognition. They deserve just more notice. And while I don't have the biggest uh, YouTube channel around, um, at least not at this moment in time, maybe sometime in the future, I'll have a bigger audience, but, you know. That is now me just talking about this kind of thing, just movies and, and stuff like this, because this does have, pertain to film. Companies like Shout Factory and the Criterion Collection, you know, those companies care about movies. They care about TV shows. They care about what they're releasing. They put a lot of care into getting the licensing, to getting it making it look and sound the best it could possibly be and then put a bunch of special features on it because there are the people who buy that stuff enjoy that <coughs> uh, quite honestly um, uh, I do uh, a lot of people do uh, they keep putting special features on the releases because people enjoy them. People enjoy uh, 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 the film, the show, so they put as much care into it and they put enough bonus stuff so it's you're getting you're getting a lot for what you're paying for. Um, uh, now some of these releases may be uh, usually criterion they're sort of pricey at times. The Barnes and Noble from what I've seen, you know, it's like forty bucks for just one movie. It's like um yeah, okay. Usually when I get them, uh right criterion, it's usually um uh when they're like a good sale, like fifty percent off or maybe sixty percent off. Or, well not it's really sixty, but like forty percent I should say. Like so that doesn't always happen, but some sort of deal criterion has, either through the website or Barnes and Noble. You know, I usually jump on a, a deal and get a movie or two that I really want to see, or I have seen, but I want the specific release. Like I had seen the Sounds of the Lambs, obviously, and uh, following DVD, um, the Blu-ray release. But, yeah, um, I think with the exception like, some cinephiles, film buffs, whatever, people who just love media, love TV shows, the average person doesn't really, probably really know about them, or at least if they do, they don't really acknowledge it. It's like, yeah, I've got some movies or shows from that company, you know, from Shout Factory and Criterion, because, you know, it says so here. I don't really think about it, um, but I want to just try and give as much exposure to them as I can. Um, also, on their social media feed, I want to say they're very friendly. Um, Criterion. Um, I talked about Sid and Nancy, and um, even uh, Train Spotting, uh, because Train Spotting actually was on. <coughs> A 
commentary was from the Criterion Collection when they were, uh, it was on Laserdisc. And, uh, they were just very friendly and cordial. I'm like, you know, they're very, like, I asked a question, like, you know, oh, well, you get Sid and Nancy to release it on Blu-ray. Would you ever possibly be able to get, like, the rights to, Train spotting back, and they're very friendly. And they that was like an email, and they said how you know while they would love to, like with Sid and Nancy, you know, we would release that on DVD, and uh, actually I think on uh, Laserdisc too, because it's like the twentieth release they ever made, uh, put out their movie. That was the twentieth movie they put out, but because they number them on the spines and while that was a thing that I could at this moment in time we're just not really able to for the moment but um with train spotting it doesn't seem it didn't seem very likely honestly it didn't seem all that likely I guess for Sid and Nancy either at the time but they're very friendly they're very nice and I even wrote back how yeah, thank you. I'm like, I knew, like, licensing and all that, you know, it's very difficult to get that kind of thing and to put the materials and the amount of effort you all put in. So, you know, I kind of at the time didn't think it was going to happen, but I'm like, you never know. And uh, I thanked them. And then they responded back to that. They're like, yeah, that was, you know, thanks. We appreciate that kind of and interest and it's like does well like it kind of I guess it helps them determine to see this person wants this movie or that movie released or re-released that we put out long ago and there's a, a, an interest here for it um, and with Shout Factory I actually messaged them on Facebook a few times the first time was like for Space Ghost Coast to Coast. I'm like, you know, it would be great. I'm like, have you ever thought about like releasing the complete series on Space uh, Space Ghost? Because like the first seven episodes or seasons were released on Blu-ray, but the eighth wasn't. Really, it was like the last season was just not on it on DVD. Like there's rumors about uh, they were all of a sixth volume, because the first volume had the first two seasons of Space Ghost, but for the first one, some episodes of seasons one and two were not uh, included due to some rights, like with the people they interviewed or whatever, and sometimes during the series, like season three, there's some stuff they had to change due to like copyrighted footage. Some stuff also of like season four for the third volume there was one episode that was missing due to like and like this thing where it was like text it was the same episode but it was aired twice but second time like they had like a Shakespeare play like the first time and they had some other play that they had to pay royalties to And there was something in there that was sort of controversial, so just another reason they didn't release it. Um, and other things, little minor things, like on the fourth volume with the fifth season, and then the fifth volume with seasons six and seven. <clears throat> just some minor things that they just didn't include, or they just had to edit out for one reason or another. And I kind of explained about that and how. It'd be nice to have the complete series the way it was always supposed to be aired the way it was, they were all supposed to be, as well as having the last season properly on DVD and or, pro or possibly at this point Blu-ray. And I sent that, and they said, you know, well, thank you for this. We have no, you know, we don't, they don't have it in the future, near future, any plans for uh, to release or put out Space Coast Coast to Coast. But they would, you know, uh, I guess, like, uh, 
they wouldn't rule out the possibility of looking into it uh, to possibly one day getting the licensing rights uh, from Adult Swim to release the series. Um, and not long ago, you know, I did the whole thing of Screen Factory and uh, Friday the 13th. You know, I messaged them about would it be, you know, uh, would you guys possibly think of releasing Friday the 13th the, the, the series, just like you did Halloween, the franchise of Halloween a few years back. And they said they would love to have Friday the 13th, but at this moment in time they don't have licensing. I'm like, yeah, understandable. With the licensing and everything, plus with this lawsuit going on, uh, it's kind of a mess, I guess. And I just thanked them for replying back to me as soon as they did. And they appreciated that as well. That's another thing that's great with Criterion and Shell Factory. When you email them or message them, they, they respond back fairly quickly, usually within a day or two. Which is great, which is, you know, uh, outside of the quality of my uh, films and TV shows those companies put out, they're very, you know, they're engaged with the people who buy their products. They're not just, it's not just some corporate people who set up the standard uh, kind of spiel about this or that, while also maybe depending, like, they have to have someone read it, but there might be like a standard thing they might be sort of required to include. It's very, it, you know, it's, it's by people who are very personal, or very, or not necessarily personal, but they are very engaged and they look and they see what people want to possibly get released by them. And, um, uh, there's just some shows and movies I would love to see released by Criterion. Whether it could ever happen for some of those or not, I don't know. Um, but, uh, you know, I just want to try and shed more light onto the Criterion Collection and Shout Factory. I hope you... Uh, if you all know about this company, or these companies, I should say, you probably already know all this. But if you haven't, maybe, you know, uh, there might be some releases by going to their website and seeing what they've got. There might be something that interests you. A film or a TV show, or through Shout Factory also with them. Uh, <clears throat> music might find something. They're also into streaming now, also. Uh, the Criterion Collection is uh, with Filmstruck, they partner with TCM, and for, and they have a deals for payment options. Um, and if you go through with this, uh, for a certain amount of time, you can see these movies that they have in their collection, and they're on TCM for a limited time. But after that, they you can buy the Blu-rays, buy the DVDs. It's not like some obscure movie that you might not be able to really get. Uh, unless they show it again, maybe months or a year later. Um, and Shout Factory has Shout Factory TV, which is a streaming service also. You can watch their... TV shows or movies, whatever they've got there. <clears throat> I believe I haven't really looked into Shout Factory TV a whole lot, but it'd be worth looking into, I think. Um, but yeah, uh, just wanted to throw that out there also. Uh, if you're into streaming and not so much movie collecting like I am. Uh, yeah.
Anyway, that's all I really wanted to say. I know I said this was going to be quick, but I, interestingly, every time I say that, it's never quick. So I've gone on for 30 minutes, and, uh, yeah. Hope you all have a good day, have a good week, and I'll see you all next time.